Hey, all right. Welcome, people, to Teep and Jay Wolf's ridiculously long PFL 2 recap and also PFL 3 preview, and most likely a somewhat PFL 1 recap when our special guest Santiago comes. My co host, Jay Wolf, is here. Jay Wolf, what's going on, brother? Hey, what's up, brother? How you doing, T? Man, fantastic to be with you. What a sensational weekend of mixed martial arts action from the PFL and the UFC 300. Man, just so much fun this week. And then, you know, and then we, we get to go get right back into it this week coming up this Friday with PFL 3. We're going to do a little uh, mini preview of that as well, to, just to add on to your fantastic intro there. And man, it was just it was just so much fun this weekend, Teep. I mean, you saw the fights, right? Just finishes galore. And then the UFC was a sensational event as well with, with Epic Rising, well, former Epic Rising champion Jerry Prohaska winning in a sensational fashion, cheering the prelims and everything, and just man, just so much fun. Just what what an absolute blast it was for MMA fans this weekend. I can't wait to recap this with you and and recap the, the you know, as soon as Santiago, the main man from Amsterdam gets here. Can't wait to do a little bit of recap from PFL one as well. Here's thoughts on because, you know, there, there was there were several uh, Bellator fighters that had to drop out. Excellent Bellator fighters. And he knows one of them. Of course, talking about Denise Keyholz, Miss Dynamite and on PFL two, a, a big one that had to drop out was Phil Davis. So it was just man. But anyways, the the just the fights themselves were just sensational. I mean, man, it, it was, it was really fun. And, you know, this is arguably like, like we were saying in the preview show, Teep, this is PFL two was one of the on paper is already the best card of, of the, you know, of, of the series so far, because there was only a couple mismatches, right? I mean, it was PFL's best, like all their champions and stuff and, and former champions and number one contenders and stuff like that. Right. Versus like Bellator's like mid, like, like five to ten top ten ranked guys, right? Like they they were top ten. They were like the bottom half of the top ten ranked. Like it was PFL's best versus like the lower half of Bellator's top ten ranked fighters, right? So it just it, it just made for a really man, and it was so fun and and just and, and then the scoreboard, man, the scoreboard got updated. I saw you made a graphic for me on, on that of the yeah, there it is. Look at that, fantastic. That's a, that's the entire scoreboard for you guys. Got updated that's now the total is 14 to 8 in Bellator's favor. And right there, you can see I, I explained the scoreboard exactly what it is Bellator versus PFL. I put the rules there. It's got to be Bellator vets versus PFL vets that are not making their debuts. It's got to be a PFL vet with at least one PFL fight. And they're right there. I listed them all out for you guys. The events, all the fights on there that, that counted for the scoreboard. From you know the the PFL tour champ versus champs event to the Bellator championship series in Belfast to the PFL one and PFL two card, and we'll update it for this week's PFL three card as well because there's a bunch there's a bunch of Bellator versus PFL even some might even be better than this week's if that's even possible. I mean, because I mean th this week remember we were saying the preview show Teep, that. You know, this 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 is a chance for PFL to gain some ground because they were putting, you know, their their best PFL fighters, like their champs and former champs, against you know, like some some mid to to lower level Bellator fighters. So, I mean, we, we were we were anticipating that they were going to gain some ground on the scoreboard, but PFL three, that's looking. I mean, to, for, while I was looking at that one, and there's only really only a couple that are like, I mean, a lot of them. I mean, I don't think PFL is going to be able to overtake them. I, I think that Bellator is going to gain the upper hand for the for the opening round, but we'll see how it plays out. So, I'm just curious, what was your favorite part of PFL two? I mean, that that was. Let's just get right into it while, and talk about PFL two while we're waiting for Santiago to get in here. I don't know, man. A lot of, and I guess overall, just a fact there are a lot of finishes. Yeah, yeah. Hey, T, can you get, can you get the better spot, better reception? You're you're sound like you're the finishes. I liked them all. Well, uh, I. Yeah. T, are, are that you better? Uh, T, okay, yeah. Now, now I can hear you. Okay, yeah. So you were saying you, you're you're Mister Finishes because you like the finishes, of course. So, what was your favorite one of the night? Oh man, I guess taking out Mads Brunel. That was. Oh, you like that one? Yeah, nice. that was impressive. 
That was impressive. I, I didn't watch any of the post-fight stuff, so I don't know if anything happened or if it was just he caught him real good and then got him. But that's an imp that was impressive. There was a lot of impressive stuff on them. I liked all the finishes. Did you have a favorite finish? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I really enjoyed Yag's. Yeah, of course, I'm about Yag Shmiradov and the Neto fight. Jacob Neto from PFL, the PFL Europe champion. And I thought that one was fantastic. Just heavyweight action. Just if you remember from the preview show, that was the that was my pick for for the the fight of the night. People's main event fight of the night. I guess the real people's main event was Clay Call versus Patricky Pitbull, and it totally delivered. But I was really looking forward to Yags and Neto, and boy, did they deliver as well. That was an impressive fight from Yags. I mean, they were hyping up Jacob Neto so much because he was a PFL Europe champion. That, and then they didn't even really say anything about I, that's why i wish they wouldn't have taken away the bellator top 10 rankings because i was trying to remember how how high up yag Shmiradov was i don't think he was top five i think he was like six or seven and and just but i mean he we, we knew we told you guys on the on the preview show that you know yag Shmiradov is he's a tough durable heavyweight and he's going to be a tough out for neto and that's that's why i was picking that one as, as a the one I was most looking forward to in the light heavyweight division. And I was I was bummed that the remember we, we had an, another fight for the lightweight division. Yeah, I'm, that, and, I'm not sure by the time they closed the rank. Uh, T you gotta you gotta get to a better you gotta get to a better reception, brother. You you like keep cutting in and out. Uh oh. Uh oh T boy, well, I just here, just cut back in when when you're when when you, when you can. I'm just gonna keep talking. I was talking about how JJ Wilson was withdrew from the 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 card, and you know we were really looking forward to that one versus oh, Pete Galati. Okay. I didn't send. Oh, are you back? Yeah, I'm back. Okay, yeah. So what what were we gonna say then? Oh, I didn't say anything. I think it was background noise, and you thought it was me broken up. He Keep on going, brother. Okay, okay, yeah. I was, I was going to talk about how you know JJ Wilson. You're talking about JJ Wilson. Yeah, yeah. He had to withdraw from the Picolati fight, and I was getting Picolati confused with, with another fighter that's going to be on the the um, PFL three event. And that was Adam Borch. That's the fighter that was the title contender, and for some reason, I was getting him confused with Picolati as a title contender. But Picolati wasn't a title contender. But anyways. And also some other wrong information from the pre preview show. The, the remember we were, when we were rating the the cards and the events, and you gave it like a seven. I gave it a five point five. The middle of that is actually six point two five instead of six, like I was saying. So I was a little off on the math, and <laughs> I was off on the on Picolati being a title challenger. And another thing that I wanted to clarify as well: each of these PFL shows for each division. They're featuring five fights. The, this is the opening rounds. So remember, we were having we had a question if um, you know all the women had fought or whatever, or all the heavyweights had fought. But and I look back and yes, there there has been there's five winners that have gone through. So all the fights have happened for every division in the women's heavyweights, and now on this PFL two card, the uh, light heavyweights and the lightweights, and then next week a PFL three we got. The featherweights and the welterweights. That's 145 pounds and 175 pounds. 170 pounds. So, just want to make sure you get that clear. They're doing all. Because remember, it's the the format is is that there's ten fighters in this to the season, and they get two fights to accumulate enough points to advance to the playoffs. And remember, we we didn't like the point system, or at least I didn't like the point system of how. You know, for the mismatch fights where they they overmatch guys to get their favorites to get you know to get through and and on this PFL two card, you know they they did that twice with shoe face versus it was totally outmatched Beyond. Beyond was not ready for that. I mean, was Beyond even top ten ranked in Bellator? I, I, he must have been like nine or ten. And then in the main event, Impa Kasanoway, their their light heavyweight champion. I mean, he fought a way overmatched Alex Polizzi, Easy Polizzi, coming off a two fight loss and everything. I mean, just now he's at a three fight loss streak. And I don't even think Polizzi was ranked anymore in Bellator, if I remember correctly. So those are the two that they set up to get the quick sixes to get their favorites, Impa and Shoe Face through. So, but I mean, everything else was, it was pretty, it was really fun. I mean, just 
just absolutely sensational. Like the the people's main event that we were talking about earlier, Clay Collard and Patricky Pitbull. Man, what an absolute banger that was! Exactly as advertised. I mean, Pitbull, and you know, Pitbull almost had it too. Pitbull, I mean, he had him knocked down, and for some reason, Pitbull didn't swarm him. I don't know why Patricky didn't swarm him right there and like kind of let him back up and let him get back into the the game. Like like he was like seemed like he was going for like a like. I don't know. It was. It was just. I just thought he should have sworn him there. But hey, credit to Clay Collard. Whether the storm came back and and got him out of there fair and square. I mean, I thought it was kind of an early stoppage myself, to be honest with you. Because I mean, I, I totally understand how the you know the Patricky's corner was yelling at the ref, going, "Hey, you know, how could he stop it like that?" The fighter was still standing. He was throwing a punch right as the ref jumped in. But you know, to, to I mean. To be fair, you can't stand there and be t eating punches like that. So, I mean, it, it, it wasn't like it was egregiously early, but it was, I felt it was early because he hadn't been knocked down, but he was just, he was eating too many punches from Clay Collard's volume. So, but I mean, I, I, for me, that was a perfect, uh, if, if Patrick was going to lose, I liked that that was the way that he lost because now he's pretty much probably out of the season. Because, you know, he, uh, unless he gets a quick six in his next fight, then he's not going to advance to the playoffs. So now he can go back to the Epic Ryzen in Japan and rematch the Epic Ryzen's lightweight champion, Satoshi, Roberto Satoshi de Souza, who, you know, if, if you remember correctly, at the, the Bellator versus Ryzen event, when they were doing the Bellator lightweight Grand Prix, Satoshi Souza, he stepped up and saved the Bellator lightweight Grand Prix by saving. He's stepping in for. Uh, uh, he literally got off his couch the week of to save that event and the lightweight Grand Prix for Bellator. Stepping in for AJ McHugh, got staff infection the week of and was unable to fight Patricky Pitbull in the in the that round of the lightweight Grand Prix. So Satoshi stepped up with no, uh, I mean, no fight camp whatsoever, less than a week notice, and fought Patricky Pitbull to save that card and the, and the Bellator Lightweight Grand Prix. So I would like them to get a rematch uh, with a full camp. So, it, so I mean, this way, Patricky, he takes a loss right here to Clay Collar, but it was it, it's controversial loss, right? Because it, it, I mean, it was an early stoppage. It just wasn't like a super egregious early stoppage, but it was early. So that's to me, that's a good scenario because he can say that and go, "Hey, I was still in the fight. I had knocked Collar down earlier." So, and then if he in his second fight, if he wins that, even if it's by like decision or whatever, and he doesn't advance to the playoffs, then he's coming off a win. He can go back to Japan later on in the year and face Satoshi Souza for the Ryzen lightweight title. So I'm I'm really pumped about that. I just I just love that result. And I don't know if you saw earlier, but uh, Patchy Mix, your guy Patchy Mix, he he's talking about he wants to fight on the Epic Rise and New Year's Eve event. And of course, we know that's going to be a collaboration event with PF Elator. So uh, I mean, I'm really looking forward. You, you already know what I want for that one. There, I mean, Patricio Pitbull, Patricky's brother, Patricio, pound for pound Pitbull, the one that just beat up Jeremy Kennedy and defended his uh, Bellator lightweight title. I mean, featherweight title. He has if this month and then a couple weeks on April 29th, April 28th for us in the states is Ryzen 46, where Chihiro Suzuki, the only man to knock out Patricio Pitbull, Patricio pound for pound Pitbull, only man to knock him out, Chihiro Suzuki, is in a super tough, I mean, featherweight, he's defending his Ryzen featherweight title, and just a, an incredibly tough fight against a gritty veteran. This, I mean, this, and if he wins that, they have got to match them up. Patricio Pitbull coming off of title defense versus Chihiro Suzuki coming off a of title defense. For New Year's Eve, that is the headliner going to sell us at Thomas Super Arena. And then they, if they get Patchy Mix over there for a rematch against somebody like they – they were talking like Kyoji Horaguchi rematch or something. I mean, dude, that, that event is going to be filled yeah, to the rafters. Fighting in Japan, that would be a big fight for the yeah, night. Yeah, because he, 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 had, he had a close fight with him, remember? The only, the only way – remember, we thought it was at worst a draw because – Patchy Mix, he he really had him. That was where it went and established the backpack as like, okay, if you're if you're stuck with the fighter on your back, then you're you're losing the fight. So that that fight really established the backpack uh, technique for Patchy Mix because that's the only way he won the fight. So yeah, I, mean, I, I thought he I thought he edged it 
but it was close because it wasn't dramatic either way one you know one way or the other but i, I gave it to him the night off but i remember a lot of people thought it went the should have gone the other way it's yeah, close. So absolutely so that'd be a fantastic rematch to have i'm glad they're talking about it Under I mean, you imagine? Set, right jay wolf Oh, let's hope, brother. Let's freaking hope because well, you know, because I want to see Patchy make some of the superior rule set. If we all possible. do. We all do. Absolutely. And <laughs> Patricio Pitbull and Chihiro Suzuki on a superior rule set. I mean, I just man, that was, that, dude, take my money right now, Don Davis and and Phil Murphy. Take my money for that PFL. I mean that that collaboration mega event on New Year's Eve. That, that's going to fill the Saitama Soup Arena, the stadium mode with 50,000 people, but be attendance for that. And just, man, it'd be so fun. So I'm happy with that, how that's developing. I can you imagine also Patricky Pitbull, who, who just lost to Clay Collard here on PFL2. I mean, if he doesn't make the playoffs, then he'd be available to fight Satoshi DeSouza for the, the Ryzen lightweight title in a rematch, where now where Satoza, Satoshi has a full training camp. And, you know, dude, there's there's history in that story to that fight as well. I mean, man, how fun would that be? This is just a, a, a triple triple threat main event right there. How man, that'd be so freaking awesome. I hope it happens. <laughs> so, but I mean, here, let's get back to PFL two card. I mean, dude, it was just man, it was fun. So so you, you liked the Maz Brunel, Michael Dufort fight. That one was, I mean, dude, it was really, I mean, they were, dude, it was a high volume, high action pace fight. And then it looked like Burnell was cruising, right? He was cruising that first round and, and then the second round. And then Dufort just came back and got him with like a, like a, almost like a liver kick. It looked like, right. And then it, it, it he was, he stunned him with like a liver kick. It seemed like, and then got him with some more strikes to where, Burnell like like he like ducked into something and then Dufort was able to, to slap on the guillotine choke and submit him and like and I, I think I was, I was reading somewhere afterwards that Burnell said that he, he that that the body kick did hurt him and that's why he was tapping fast because he was like you know gasping for breath and when Dufort slapped the choke on him real quick like that he was already out of breath and so he had to tap fast or go out so but man, that was what what a what a slick move for the Canadian kid, Michael Dufort. That was that was that was probably a submission of the night. I, I, I yeah, that's. Well, let me see if there's any other submissions here. Was there any other submissions? Yeah, there was a bunch of other submissions. I mean, Brett Primus, that was the former Bellator champion, submitting Bruno Miranda. That was another rear naked choke that I thought was fantastic. But I don't know that. That that Dufort Burnell one, man, that that was just, it was just cool because you know how much action was in that fight prior to that was striking, right? And the way that he got it on real quick after the the body kick, that was that was a lot of fun. So I can totally see why that's your pick, T. And then for the for the KOs, I mean, yeah, like we were saying earlier, Yags and Neto, man, that was awesome. And then, of course, the we just talked about the Clay Collard and Patricky Pitbull. And then, I guess, I mean, you know, the, the main event, I guess, was a really cool one as well, a cherry the event. But for me, it wasn't as cool because it was just very evident that Polizzi was outmatched. M Impa was just too much for him as the champion. And P was Polizzi still ranked top 10 in Bellator? Do you remember the rankings at all, T? I uh, let me see. Before his last loss, he might have been near the bottom of the rankings. He had no, been he definitely, he definitely, was. definitely was ranked. Yeah. At point. Right, but I don't think he was still ranked at the time before they did away with the rankings because he was coming off of two losses. So I think it – I mean, if he was ranked, it had to have been at like 9 or 10 at the most. So I think Simon Bion, he, he would just crack the top 10, right, at like number 10. So, I mean, that's – and they were matching him up with the, you know, the PFL champion – so I mean, it's like, dude, that yeah, was another have, mismatch. I can't, I'm trying to remember how the order of things, because uh, after his win over Trainer, he might have bumped into the top ten and pushed Polizzi out. But I just can't remember. No, dude, they should have kept those rankings, man. It's such a bummer they got rid of them. They were so fun to look at and talk about. And they could have, they could have used them for for these seasons and been like, hey, this is not only a Bellator fighter, this is a Bellator top ten ranked fighter. 
but then they'd, they'd have to list the rankings and they'd see that all these all the Bellator fighters were in the bottom half of the top 10 going against the PFL champions. That's that's probably one of the reasons why they did it. But <laughs> so, still. so in this format, in this season format, the season winner from the year before is just in this regular season. And some of them, not in, not in all of them. So the, the one the who drew Parisi, because yeah, so Impa, it, it, Impa, the the main event guy that fought Polizzi, he was last year's light heavyweight champion. Remember, and he had just he had just dropped down in the PFL tour champ versus champs card to face Johnny Eblen, where Johnny Eblen put on a, showed his championship medal, put on a champ performance, and beat Impa fair and square, two rounds to one. So I mean, and just and that's why Impa's coming back up now. That's why they probably gave him, you know, uh, outmatched him with Polizzi, or, or you know, you know, matched him down with Polizzi because they wanted to get him a win, obviously, because you know he's the champion. So they wanted to get him a quick six, right? But they uh, say it's random, right? Yeah, but I don't believe so. He that. randomly got a nice bounce back fight after the exactly. loss to, to the human cheat code or whatever the heck. Evelyn right. is going by these days. I liked right. uh, Diamond Diamond Hands. I thought it was good. Yeah, and, and you talk about Johnny Evelyn? Yeah, nicknames. I went off on a nickname tangent. I like Diamond Hands, but he's changed <laughs> it all the time. I, f I don't know what the most recent is. The Human Cheat Code was it for a while, for about a year at least. Yeah, he's, I think he's, he's under, that was the nickname is Pressure or something like that, right? Is that what it is? Pressure? Yeah, I think it's something like that. It sounds like yeah, a men's cologne. <laughs> you know, yeah, Johnny he, Depp playing a piano and in, in <laughs> inside a like under a waterfall and <laughs> nice. Hey, that's a good advertisement. I like it. <laughs> well, they have one with him playing guitar in the desert. I mean, he has a band. I don't know how good he is on guitar. I mean, yeah, you don't record yeah. the audio live for that kind of commercial, but like, I'm pretty sure he has a band. But yeah, he was playing guitar in the desert. Uh, I thought it was cool. I'm not buying a damn cologne. <laughs> based on how johnny depp looks in the desert right right it's all good i mean some people do because they're like yeah when i when i smell this i think of i think of that all right <laughs> but no no like like you're saying Teep, that was definitely a bounce back fight it was not randomly made like that and that, that's a question i can't wait for sonny to get here because you know phil davis was on this card originally right and he withdrew the week of and they brought in uh another pfl guy tom breeze you know, also from ksw tom breeze to fight rob wilkinson because that he was originally going to fight phil davis and phil davis is what would have been the highest ranked uh bellator light heavyweight to fight right and he he, he had a good chance of, of you know winning because uh, he you know as we were saying before he, phil davis is a tough out for anybody not named madame nemkov right so it's like I, I, I want. That's why I want to talk to Santiago and find out if he has any update information about Denise Miss Dynamite Q Holtz withdrawn from PFL one at the last minute. Because I mean, she would have been a much tougher. She was facing against one of their favorites for the on the women's side originally, right? And they she withdrew, and then they brought brought off Ilara Joanne off the couch uh, on a week notice to face one of the favorites, to get her a quick six to get her a guaranteed spot in the 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 playoffs, right? So I'm just wondering. So what like, did you think? I, that reminds me. I had a question, Jay Wolf. So, what did you think of? So, Robotnov won, but he won by decision. How good was his opponent? Oh, his, his opponent was a good uh, dude. Let, let me see what kind of a streak he was on. But I remember it was like a, a nice little streak he had going on. Oh, no, no, no. It, it was he was coming off. Of, uh, he had made the playoffs last year, so he so he's on a, a good little win streak before that. He had made the PFL playoffs. And and so, and Rabanov he you know dominated uh, well he, unanimous decision. It was clear that Rabanov got that decision, and you know that I thought that was but a he fantastic. Gets three, so he gets three points. Yes, he, he only gets three points for a decision. So I mean, he that's and he he was definitely top ten ranked in Bellator. Yeah, he was. He was, a, he was probably at number five or six. Yeah, I think he was. They six. shut it down. It was. He was pretty. He was. He was doing pretty good in there. Because I, I think I remember uh, trying to uh, go, you know, go on the way back machine to look up the 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 rankings and stuff, right? And I think that only Patricky Pitbull was still top five ranked because you know he was a former champion, and then um, 
and I think the only other one was, I think, I don't know, Primus was still top five ranked, but it was like, I think that was it. Cause I, I, I don't think that Rabanov, I think he was six or seven, like you're saying. And I, I know Beyond was in the bottom half at like nine or 10. Same thing with uh, Polizzi, if he was even you know, ranked. Uh, Santiago's here. I'm going to let him in. Keep yes. going, though, Jay Wolf. Excellent. Oh, I want to talk to Santiago about about Denise Keyholtz. Does he have any updated information about her? I want to get his thoughts on PFL1. All right, now, Santiago. What it is, though? How you doing? Hey, what's up, Jay Teep? So nice to be here, man. How are you guys doing? Absolutely, Sonia. Well, I you toast here. your health, sir. Yes, thanks for thanks for coming on, Sonia. We've been itching to talk to you, brother. It's just we can't wait to hear your thoughts on. Just want to get your quick thoughts on PFL one with the women and the heavyweights. Yeah, can you rattle off machine gun style your your PFL one thoughts, Santiago? Sorry about my that was my mistake about last week. No, it's okay, man. And uh, it was also a little bit my mistake. I always love coming on to the show. PFL one was fucking amazing, man. Because like a lot of Bellator fighters won. There was also some Bellator versus Bellator fighter fights, but still PFL one was amazing. But uh, then Fedor it, there, Fedor was there. Exactly, and all his guys won. He, he went like four and zero. Oh. He was in the corner of four guys. They all won. But but uh, PFL one amazing. PFL two, God, that was so horrible, guys. Like almost all the Bellator fighters lost. That was a really bad experience, man. <laughs> I was breaking your heart. You were feeling yo the Bernal the Bernal. Like, I was like, no, man. But I guess, yeah, Jay will say he said after that kick really got him and he just already couldn't breathe. I was like, yo, you just sub mads. What the hell? That was yeah. Crazy. yeah. Yeah. And then Espinosa and Piccolotti. Piccolotti was cruising to a, a victory. And then Espinosa just pulls off the third round, come back, flying knee KO. I mean, yeah. and, well, you love to see him even night. if it goes against your guy. You love to see people make a big comeback with some flying shit. And the same yeah, thing sure. with the Mads fight. I'm I'm not cheering against Brunel. It's just that you got to reckon you got to tip the hat when it's epic. I guess. Yeah, that was, that, that was another fight where the Bellator guy was on his way to winning, and then, then unless the it's Fedor, Fedor, unless you knock out Fedor, I'll never <laughs> forgive. Uh, yeah, not a single Bellator fighter won on the main card of PFL two. Three guys won in the prelims. You know, Yakshi Muradov had a good one. He's my uh, yeah. Pick to win everything at light heavyweight, you know, Big Marcel thinks Impa, but I, I wanted to make another choice, you know, otherwise it's going to be so boring. So on the show, I said, I think it's going to be actually Mur Muradov and he had a first round knockout. So he has six points, you know. Yeah. N now they took off Phil Davis from the, the light heavyweight tournament. Exactly. It's like, and that, that, that's, that, that was where he withdrew the week of. I was, that's why I want to ask you about the PFL one. Do you have any update on Denise Keyholtz on what happened to her? Because we, we, dude, nobody, none of the people in the quote unquote MMA media, well, that should oh, be man. called the UFC media, even asked about it. So. Yeah, it's it's like uh, what I heard, like a personal thing, something with a trainer, something happened to a trainer, or something along those lines. But like, if just look at what uh, Tyler Santos did to Joanne. Uh, Giovanni, exactly. So uh, I'm kind of happy Denise didn't make the fight. You know what I mean? It could could be a rough fight for her as well. You know? Uh, no, Denise would have been much tougher. She was she would have come off a full camp. Giovanni was just getting off the couch the week. No, of. that's true. So, yeah, that's true. So and and I was just wondering if there's any kind of conspiratorial stuff going on with getting off because Denise would have been a much tougher fight for one of their favorites, Santos. Uh, you caught her, Jay Wolf. It was aliens. <laughs> And no, 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 right. Defo handled the cover up. He's been left hooking the, the, the snitch. Yeah, but what, what about what, is, what about Phil Davis? Phil Davis dropping off the week of, and Phil Davis was. He sucks, man. I want to see Phil. I want to see Phil uh, over in in Ryzen under the superior. I want to see if he can, because he has the capability to knock people down. Is it a big incentive to do stuff like that if you can then put the boot in? Yeah, down the there, ground you know? knees. The yeah, stomps, the ground yeah, knees. wrestling, north-south position, ground knees. I kind of want to see him get in there before it's all over. You know, he's getting well, up Phil, there. Phil's in an interesting situation because right now the light heavyweight champion in Bellator is Corey Anderson, and he only lost via split decision. He might even won that fight. So, hey, he can go just back to Bellator and maybe that's, fight for the title, you know? That's probably what's going to happen. Bet you anything that's what happens. Hey, that, right that's on, man. Good, they, good, they can good do calls they can on do that. Yeah, because yeah, so, with Nemkov moving up and moving on, it's like it's a it's not a free for all. I mean, they've already partly settled it, but yeah, like stick Davis in there. I'm I'm down for that. 
Yeah, because there's not really a contender at light heavyweight either, so that that could be the case. But like, so the main card, I was really annoyed PFL too, all these Bellator fighters, and they all got finished as well, you know. But it was a pretty entertaining card. I'm not sure if you guys caught it, but there was only one decision on the whole card. It was Gatsu. Yeah. Where I don't know if he won. All the other all the other fights were all finishes, you know. So good for the fans, but man, I wanted to see some Bellator fighters win. That's uh, what, hey, Sanella, don't, don't even trip. The, yeah, the, remember, I love, I don't know I love the finishes. But Sanella, did, did, did you see the? Did you hear the beginning of the show? The scoreboard is now fourteen to eight in Bellator's favor. Look at, look at the graphic that team made of, of the. I got all listed out for you, right there. Oh, every shit. every event, every fight that counts for the scoreboard, Bellator versus PFL. And the, the scoreboard so far is 14 to 8. So, yeah, PFL gained some ground, but Bellator is still in a commanding lead. And PFL 3 has, has much more favorable matchups to where, like this one on PFL 2, it was, like I was telling Teep earlier, there's a bunch of PFL champions versus like mid level Bellator guys, like the lower true. half of the, of the top 10 uh, of Bellator yeah, fighters. Uh, uh, that reminds me, Santiago. Do you remember? Was Polizzi even ranked in the top ten still, or was he out of the rankings? And it was like Bion that took his place at number ten. No, 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 no. He was uh, he was pretty high ranked, you know, like eight or or something. Oh, Bion was eight, and and no, then no, Polizzi no, no, was like nine. Bion, we were not able to rank Bion anymore. He was out of the rankings, and we could not rank him in. So I was afraid he was maybe cut. But Polizzi was number eight or seven, even you know, still. Oh, okay, but he was. They were definitely lower half of the top ten. So, that's 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 what we thought. And they they if you notice they matched them up against the their two strongest champions from PFL. So, that was. Well, I get the, it, but but still, like they they got finished pretty badly. Also, Patrick got finished very bad. Matt Burnell, you know, uh, Bijong in a round. <laughs> you know, yeah. that's uh, that was not fun. But Piccolotti. Wait, no, no. You know, you, you don't like the Patricky fight. I, and oh, did you think that the Patricky got was that an early stoppage in your opinion? Because I mean, they, there was a huge Maybe. controversy fight night because Patricky yeah. was swinging back during the during the finish. His corner was going crazy, saying it was early. I felt it was kind of early, but he I thought he was, you know, it wasn't like egregiously early. It was just, you know, because he was still standing and returning yeah. fire. So. Yeah, yeah, I'm not, I, I, uh, I thought it was a good stoppage, to be honest. The guy was really bad. Yeah, yeah I was he, okay got, with he the got hit like ten times, and then he 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 uh, punched one back, and then he got yeah. hit ten times again. What are you supposed to do if you're a referee? Yeah, he was getting lit up. I mean, if yeah. the re if the ref is saying show me something, and you keep getting lit up, even if as he's come made the decision, you start throwing back. It's like he's already seen enough. He's like, yo, you just took a bunch of artillery unanswered. I said something, you took some more. You know, when the ref says that, you may as well need to throw right away. Because he's yeah, at that point run away. and there's every shot. But, you know, so it was, I guess, all right. I mean, I didn't want him to lose, but but I also don't want him to be, like, get totally jacked up when he's going to lose. He looked pretty done. I mean, was am I wrong? No, you're yeah, right. I, I, what and, do you think of our acronym? Here's a hashtag for you, brother. TJWRLPFL2R. <laughs> <laughs> WS with Santiago. Yeah, that's yeah, a hell of an acronym, right? Yeah, we gotta add an S in there for show title. <laughs> <laughs> we, got, we gotta add an S in there. We gotta add, add a, a T, T and, and T S and J PFL two recap. <laughs> yeah, we need a name. We need a name for the for the because we're doing recap preview combos. We need a new name for the show, guys. That's all right. Hey, I, I like the ridiculously long. That, that's a good good phrase you coined, T. And did you see somebody at, at the at the UFC? Post fight presser trying to take credit for our uh term PFL tour, acting like they're the ones that coined it. It's like, no, Yo, dude, we're the ones that coined it. A thousand people have said that. A thousand yeah, people have dude. said that, to be fair. It was us. On first. Earth. It was us. <laughs> well, not everyone on earth. Most people don't know what <laughs> PFL or Bellator is, you know, or, you know, it's like it's not famous like that globally. <laughs> it's not like when we say know, football, right? and they're like, oh, football, <laughs> cricket, you know, like that. Uh, <laughs> no, but just I just wanted to say, like, for the PFL 3 card, I'm not sure if you guys already saw that, a lot of Bellator on that, man. Fuck, that's yeah. such, a good, such a good card, man. Absolutely, yeah. Who yeah on there? What, are, what are all the matchups? I don't even know. Oh, okay. I'm casual Except now, the, Santiago. I'm super casual. No, it's okay. Want, you want to listen to off, Sanyo? You want to listen to off? I can listen to off for you if you want. Well, the, the main event is Koreshkov against Umalatov. Pretty good fight. And then Brendan Lafneni against Carvalho. Logan Story is on the card. Justin Gonzalez. Goitia Mucci takes on Neiman Gracie. 
Kai Kamaka, somebody who we interview a lot on the Bellator Zone, set to take on Baba Jenkins. Adam Borwick takes on Eric Basola, Bellator versus Bellator as well. Timur Kisri of Brad Jones, also Bellator versus Bellator. Uh, well, Brandon that, Bar- that one, B- B- Brett Johns is technically a PFL fighter now. We just went through this in the Ryzen Discord earlier today. Okay. Brett Johns, he had signed with PFL before the buyout, supposedly. Yeah. And he had, he, he had his first PFL fight in December of last year, a PFL Europe. Yeah. So te- yeah, technically, win. technically, Brett Johns is a PFL fighter now. But he's going up, definitely, definitely going up against a, a Bellator fighter, Tamir Kizriev. So that one, if Kizriev wins, that counts for the scoreboard 100%. So that, that that could be number fifteen right there. <laughs> no, I get it. But like and then and then Brandon Ward, of course. This is a very good card. You know, Otto Rodriguez, also somebody who fought in Bellato, and Roman Debian, also on the card. Wasn't somebody Rodriguez who... supposed to fight Pico or something? Or am exactly. I thinking of a different dude? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. That's the dude. But he got he got uh in the end he didn't fight him anymore. And then Roman Debian is somebody who scored a knockout in Paris, Bellat at Bellato Paris, twenty twenty three, and I was there. So uh nice. Yeah. And Luca Luke, Luke Apocalypse. No, it's Paris, you said. Oh, oh, you're talking about Czech Congo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then also Luca Pocklet is on, on the PFL three card as well against the Bell uh, against a PFL fighter. So that, that oh, nice, you remember, nice. Yeah, you remember yeah, yeah, Luca I, I I don't see that. I don't see, where do you see that uh, Jay? It says right here on Tapology, it's Luke Apocalypse versus Zach Usola. Ah, okay. I'm I'm looking at uh, Wikipedia. It doesn't say anything about him. Oh, yeah. Look on Tapology. Unless unless it got taken off and we haven't heard about it yet. But yeah, Luke Apocalypse supposed to be on this card according to Tapology. Uh, that's, that's a good now, fight. Now wait, Jay Wolf. Who was it? The Apocalypse fought because we had two guys who who were runners up for our submission of the year one year. They fought he each fought. other. He fought against Roman Feraldo, and uh, he fought against uh, uh, Oliver that, Ankamp. I was that, there. That's Paris. what it was. It was Ankamp had that crazy submission, and then Pocklet had the crazy submission, and they fought exactly. each other. Exactly. Yeah. I don't yeah. even then remember what happened. Po- Who won po- that? Pocklet beat him. I was there in uh, Paris. That was as well. But uh, I'm 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 on the PFL Twitter page now, Jay. It doesn't say anything about uh, Pocklet, so I don't think he's on the card, man. Really? Oh wow! L- look at the Tapology page. It's still coming up on Tapology. It says it's the third prelim, right above the Otto Rodriguez versus Tyler Diamond fight. So that's that's a bummer if he's not on the card. Oh, what, man. Yeah, I don't that's know a, what uh, happened. There. I, I'm not sure what happened there, but this is a very good card. Also, Logan Storley's on Andre Koreshkov. Come on, at least in every PFL card one, two, and three, there has been a Bellator fighter in the main event that's also pretty cool you know but yeah uh, uh these are some of the best fighters in bellator mma they're kind of tearing the organization apart you know makes me a little bit sad guys yeah, yeah well, at least at least i give them some praise it. it's not like the way they wound down strike force brother that was brutal exactly exactly or they just got, everything was as big as it was going to be it was like oh well, man it was it was so exciting and then they had the sale after the you know the grand prix the heavyweight grand prix i'm like this is incredible this is this ha- could have some of the matchups we didn't get and there's all this excellent so many top 10 guys in there and then it was like they bought it out they did finish the tournament but the way they wound it down like the second last year i think they only have four cards and then the yeah, last I- year in 13 they just had one card and then killed it and they didn't do it. and i'm pretty sure that last card was supposed to be cormier versus frank Mir, and they and then ended up being like DC fighting star, some sixteen to one underdog guy. <laughs> Typical fighting Daniel Cormier, you know, like. who who had already beaten Bigfoot <laughs> Silva, <laughs> just, just schooled Bigfoot Silva, and had that fantastic long fight with Josh Barnett. Yeah, that was a good one. But hey, there's still eight. The, the guys are still eight more or seven more Bellator events this year. So yeah, there's, gonna be, there's gonna be some right there. You're afraid to say Bellator. Like they they're giving full credit. So like they're not they're not running their business. They're doing it more along the Ryzen lines where you just acknowledge everything that's happening. Because UFC, it's it's always so weird. They're always so weird about it. Yeah, they they didn't even mention. Uh, I think it was only DC that mentioned on the commentary about Kayla Harrison 
coming from PFL. And when he was talking, about, I was talking about how she could use elbows now. And so it's like, man, it's such a contrast seeing PFL. It's just, just, con give it's so just constant, like, just gaslighting and stuff. It's, it's pretty annoying. But, but, you know, to be fair, most MMA production is pretty annoying. Ryzen is, is absolutely dreamy. I've had great times watching Bellator. Strike Force was awesome. Elite XC had good stuff. And that, but, now, you know, now you're having fun watching Ryzen. Yeah, oh yeah. And now you're having fun watching PFL tour as well, right? I'm the having PFL some and Bellator fun. I, cards. I don't like I don't like the point system because I see how it's like, okay, so Rabadinoff is one of the best fighters at lightweight, right? But he only yeah. gets three points because he won by decision. Yeah. Yeah. Against that opponent as opposed to someone who may some may have had a, an older opponent or a just an, or, someone not as good stylistically for them. So it's like automatically now he's only got half the points of the guys who got quick finishes, but Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, so now, he he's going, now he's going uphill. It's it's just it's just a little weird because the sample size of the season is so small. I'm not really focusing on that. I'm just watching and enjoying as best I can. But it's that in the background is annoying. And that they exactly. weren't gonna do the million dollars finale for the tournament. Yeah, for the That's lightweight tournament. Too. That's annoying yeah. too. I I don't like that. Like I don't I don't celebrate that stuff. So I'm still watching, but I'm casual now. And let's see how the next round, how they're going to match up the next round. That'll be that'll be even more telling. If they keep matching up the favorites, like the ones that got quick sixes with cream puff, easy, you know, easy matchmaking to get them, you know, for sure guaranteed in the playoffs. Or if are they going to really match up the all the ones that got quick sixes? If they're going to match them up against each other, and then like the ones that got only three points, they're going to give them an easier fight. To, for them to get a chance to get a quick six themselves to make the playoffs. Is this going to be sure. really telling? For really sure, telling. they're going to do that with, with Dakota Chafa. She's going to get another easy opponent. Mark my words. Yeah, yeah. So it, the next round is going to be really telling how they're going to do it. So it'll be interesting to see. But, but hey, Sonia, you're right. On this PFL 3 card, it's not like PFL 2 was the PFL champions versus the, the lower level, bottom half of the top 10 fighters for Bellator. But this PFL 3 card... There's a lot of fantastic upper top 10 fighters against, you know, regular PFL guys. So, I mean, you know, they, PFL might have made up some ground on PFL 2 to where now the scoreboard is 14 to 8. But PFL 3, I just I, I could see Bellator really running away with it and possibly, you know, I mean, they, there's only a couple of fights that I could see PFL winning like easily. Right. So it's like. Right. And a lot of the guys they matched up with the Bellator guys, like the one against Logan Storley, he's from M1 Global and KSW, right? He's not even right. a PFL guy, so that that's like he's making his debut. So, and then another one on the prelims. Let me see who he was. It was I think it's Murad Ramazanov. Let me make sure real quick. He's fighting. He's a one. Yeah, he's a one championship guy. So, a, a yeah. lot. Of, so, undefeated guy as well oh your yeah. scoreboard's gonna get way more complicated jay wolf <laughs> no no I, 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 with notes yeah. and notes and a forward by <laughs> T. no no but if, if you look put, put the graphic up of the scoreboard again it says the rules right there it's got to be see right there underneath the scoreboard it says rules bellator vets versus pfl vets no debutantes so it can't be somebody just debuting for pfl for the first time they've got to have at least one pfl fight under their belt for it to count towards a scoreboard. That's why Brett Johns is going to count because Brett Johns, he fought in December for PFL and supposedly he had signed before the Bellator buyout happened. And that's why he fought in December of PFL Europe. So that, that one against Timur Kizriov on PFL three, that is counting for the scoreboard. So that's, that's how it works. It's got to be vets versus vets. So, and, it's, well, and it's, the Bellator the, guys need to step it up. I don't want to have to switch this graphic around. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to become the train. I don't like that stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. But no, that's I think so they'll do funny. pretty good on PFL three. And then so Sonny, funny. did you, did you want to, uh, you know, I don't think you should you have to be held. I could, to share that, for, uh, I could share for the PFL guys. Cause you know why? Cause that ain't friggin' Nemkov. Possibly the best fighter in the whole sport is a PFL guy now. If he's he's fought in PFL, he kicked ass in PFL. So if someone from Bellator comes over and fights Nemkov, and Nemkov is repping PFL in your rankings, I'm gonna cheer for the other side. I'm gonna switch jackets well, for the night. Well, he, the, he he still counts as a Bellator fighter because he came across in the acquisition 
we're talking about oh i see so you're not so you're not so pfl is not in your in your theoretical bracket like they're not absorbing fighters as they become vets because yeah yeah for, for, for the scoreboard so for the scoreboard and, and to keep the fun rolling for the season, yes yes so, so to keep the scoreboard going for the whole cool. season yeah, it's, it's, it's the Bellator guys are going to stay built, and, and it also also it depends on how they do the graphics. If if you notice the graphics that PFL is putting out, they they, they even list them as former Bellator fighters, right on the promotional graphics, right. So if they keep doing that for the rest of the season, then it for sure can do. They that's a lock that those count for the scoreboard. So that's I mean I, I just wanted to keep going. I just I'm having so much fun. It just adds an extra layer of fun with these fights for me so it just and i'm sure to uh, other people as well so it's just i, I just want to keep it going so that's that's, no, what, that's what the rules are it's a lot of fun i i, I uh, understand what you mean and uh, this whole pfl3 card is pretty fun uh we have a little bit of a problem here in the netherlands because the broadcaster only broadcasts it, it it live the event and if you want to watch it back it takes days before they upload it, so uh, not so good on, on, on their part. But on the other hand, uh, this card is f freaking good. A lot of Bellator, even two Bellator versus Bellator fighters. Oh, I'm sorry, three technically Bellator versus Bellator fighters on the card. I love it. And here, I think the Bellator fighters are going to do better, you know, because I have to yeah. be honest with you guys, the whole that whole PFL stuff, it doesn't do anything for me, man. I'm just watching this stuff because there's Bellator in it, you know. Otherwise, I wouldn't give <laughs> two fucks about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, 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 dude, we saw it how without the elbows, it's like on PFL 1, there were several fights that should have been finished with elbows. But, I mean, they and PFL 2, they just scored so good on PFL 2. Like you were saying, Santiago, only one decision. Everything else was a sensational finish. So, I mean, and only a couple mismatches like we were talking. So it was just, they really lucked out. Hopefully that happens again for PFL 3. I'm really loving the matchups on there. I mean, it's like, like we're saying, it's now it's not the PFL champs versus mid, you know, mid-level Bellator guys anymore. This is, this is regular, this is PFL guys versus some high-level Bellator guys. And it's so. exciting, but uh, I also heard Don Davis say, Chris Cyborg versus uh, Larissa Pacheco is going to be the co-main event on uh, Francis Ngannou versus yes. La Problema card. So, dude, that's a big, that's a fucking big fight. And uh, who knows who's going to be on that card more. And they're going to bring it to Saudi Arabia probably again. So that's also cool. Yeah, but, that's supposed to happen in September-ish, right? Remember? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, September, yeah. October, kind of something like that. And, uh, hey, I'm looking forward to that. But, uh, you know, so I, I just want to say... Uh, can, can I just interject and ask you guys sure. real quick? So, who gets your Fedor medal? Who got who? Who did the most awesome thing that night in PFL two? Uh, whew. yeah, it's difficult to go against Elfin Espinosa. Very, very insane finish. But uh, yeah, Collard was also not bad. Maybe Devor. I know. I will go with Espinosa. To be honest, I really love the flying. Knee. Oh, nice. Even though it came against the Bellator guy. That's that's big of you, Santiago. See, you, you're, you're coming around to PFL. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm going to go with I'm going to go with Yag Shmiridov. I absolutely, as we were talking about earlier, before he came on Santiago, I just love that fight so much. They were hyping up Neto as a Bellator, I mean, as a PFL European champion. Yag Shmiridov just came in there. Just what a sensational performance and finish right there. And then for, for submission, I'm going to go with Brent Premis. I love that submission as well. Just showing he, he was he was a former Bellator champion, showing his championship medal, submitting a tough guy, tough PFL fighter. So it's really and, and the fight of the night obviously was Clay Collard and Patricky Pitbull, Patricio's brother, Patricky Pitbull. I mean, that was just but that show, he shows why he's from the Pitbull camp when absolute war and Clay Collard, man, just they were hyping up as having some of the best boxing in the the lighter weight divisions for mixed martial arts and he really showed it boy he was he, his volume was impressive and i mean i i still am butthurt that patricky didn't swarm him when he had him rocked and knocked him down but i mean it was a hey, credit to clay collard impressive impressive comeback and and did they even build that fight before as the people's main event and it delivered so i mean that's we got to give that one some flowers as well because that was just i i mean 
and also the the like Teep was saying, oh wait, no, he will probably pick that one for his Teep. Which ones are your your you know fights of the night and submissions of the night and stuff? I don't know. I don't have any strong opinions. Uh, um, I was just feeling the absence of Fedor. There wasn't a lot of Fedor on this card. There was no Fedor on this card. <laughs> so I'll probably just I'll just get, I'll just reserve the medal for Fedor. No, I mean there was a lot of good stuff. Um, I'm so bad with people's names. Home slice who subbed. Uh, Mads. Yeah, yeah. Michael Michael Dufour, the Canadian kid. Dufour, yeah, that was Dufour, a yeah. Was no disrespect there. intended. I'm pretty shit with names. I have no notes. And I'm casual now. Yo, I give him the I give him the, the Fader medal for the performance, like for the because that was nice because if the kick set up the submission, especially, that's beautiful martial arts right there. It was. That was it that was, was really impressive. Yeah, I, Even though yeah. I really wanted Mads to win. I like him because he likes the old school boxing, so no, I agree. I, 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 I agree with that, but like uh, it was such a bad taste in my mouth, you know, PFL two. So uh, I'm happy that we're getting into a new chapter, PFL three. Yeah. And so, damn, that's so a Santiago lot of rate the first. So PFL one rate that zero to ten. We gave it. Uh, let's see, I gave it a seven. Yeah, and and I gave it a five point five to a six. So it, even in the middle, it was a six point two five. Okay, the first one, no, the first one for me was like uh, eight and a half. Very really? entertaining stuff. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah, very. See, very I was going to give it stuff. like a five and a half, but then Fedor was there. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, that, yeah. so on in the enjoyment, it was a seven, but it wasn't like. Oh, c- come on. How can you not like the card? And then Moldavski, the last fight of the night, Moldavski pouring it on this uh, Delia guy in the first round. Yeah. Fedor in oh, the I cage. Did. I mean, I a seven it, is man. good, but it. seven doesn't leave me glowing. Yeah, I, I was I was upset at Santiago about the the mismatches for the women, and how they they all c- clearly were trying to get their favorites yeah. some quick sixes. I and think just... the point structure, to be honest, is takes a little bit away from my enjoyment. I like the straight line bracket tournaments Bellator was doing. I really yeah. enjoyed, even though they yeah. didn't play out as fast as I would want them to, but they did play out, and they have some great stuff in there. And it was you kind of see what was coming. Right. This feels Absolutely. a little bit micromanaged and then they're like, Oh, this is totally random. Here's a layup for the one we want six <laughs> points. <laughs> oh, exactly. come on, guys. So that's gonna drag that's gonna drag my rating. If they didn't have that in the background, if there was something less weird, probably I would have given it an eight because Fedor was there. Yeah, you see, that's that's funny you say that because that's exactly what I'm gonna do for PFL two. Because there was only a couple mismatches, like we were saying, the the shoe face Beyond and then the Impa Polizzi match. I think were the only two that were real mismatches, and to get the the favorites quick sixes, right? So yeah. I, I, and every fight was practically a finish, except for you know one decision and one like injury TKO. So it's like I'm gonna give that an eight. I mean eight, possibly maybe eight point five. I don't know. So I I, I just really enjoyed. Okay. It. I, so I had a great about time you? With that one. Did you give yours? I. Yeah, I give this card like a six. Because the Bellator okay. guys. And the first one you exactly. gave. What did you give the first exactly. one? Exactly. Exactly. You gave it eight, right? Okay, so you went eight to six. J Wolf went like five and a half to an eight. I went from seven. Yeah. I'm gonna say, I gotta say, I, I, I don't want to be rude. I don't want to be like um, negative. The, the production. I'm very much a fan of Ryzen and, and Bellator's old production. So it affects my enjoyment, but I love finishes, man. I gotta give it. I gotta give it a, like an eight, seven point five, but the f- to eight in that range. Nice, Tom, man. Tom. How can I complain about finishes? The only way it gets better, <laughs> if it gets up in the nine, is if the guys I wanted to win won the fights. Exactly right. <laughs> yeah, right. But it's almost no, but, all finishes. But, We're bad enough. The only decision. I mean, I would celebrate that in any promotion. You gotta love that. No, that you're right. You're right about that. And then just want to say about the broadcast, deep. Uh, I I agree with you, but I I barely watch anything of the broadcast. You know, I just want to see the fights. It's not like I'm really like with Bellator. I was watching the whole freaking broadcast, the whole show. You know, now I don't yeah, really do that I've, with the PFL stuff. I've been putting like Motown on <laughs> to cover <laughs> up, it, like to blend with the stuff so that it's more enjoyable for me. Like I blend it with one of my favorite things in the world. They actually, guys, they actually don't do that bad, and they they give like the Bellator Coke, guys you know? their flowers. Coke on its own is okay, but you add some rum, now you're talking, you know. So that's like Motown, like soothes my. I'm just used to the other thing. It's just different, you know. Everything's different. Yeah, but but Teep, Teep, you guys, they they give the, the Bellator guys their flowers and really hype them up really well. It's it's really nice to hear. I mean, oh, it's I know, just, I, but it, I'm I'm talking about the people that are on the mic. 
and the way that they're used to doing their thing because i haven't been watching pfl so it's a little bit jarring for me to switch over to okay no you know i hear you mean? but yeah yeah because after the fights awesome. they'll cut to a guy and have him talk for 15 minutes before the next fight even starts right well, yeah like, i just don't want to be ne- <laughs> i just don't want to be negative though because this is all voluntary I, i'm not obligated to watch so i don't watch a lot of the care well basically any of the carriage programming now it's i've kind of so like half tuned out i'm casual but i enjoyed the card yeah. i enjoyed the fights i should say not necessarily the card but exactly. the fights it was it's fun that's, man what can you ask for i just wish um, mads had won with a spectacular yeah, front kick combo into a friggin submission that would have been better <laughs> he had done it no, but, uh, talking, victim. <laughs> talking about mads burnell yeah he's not a lightweight you know he looked very small in there uh so i think this is i think you're gonna see him quickly in bellator mma in the featherweight division again because it's very difficult to come back from uh being finished and then all the like clay carlett had a, had had a finish michael defort had a finish brent primus had a finish so it's very difficult to get into the espinosa had a finish very difficult for him to advance so i think Don't we're gonna they, see aren't they also now. involved in the in the pairings for the second round of the season yeah, it's gonna be really interesting to see. The, the, he's talking about the second round pairings, so the the matchups they're gonna make for the second round. It's gonna be really interesting because, like you were saying, Santiago, there's there, there was uh, four or five or, or five or six guys that got quick sixes for for the the lightweight division, right? That's so exactly. there, there's already there's there's so many guys that got a, a first round finish that that six points is not even enough to get you in the playoffs right now exactly so it's like yeah i mean that's, and, and that's cool. enough, regardless of what he does we probably won't be seeing him in the playoffs right yeah uh, yeah maybe if he scores a finish deep then his chances then go have up nine points i mean yeah, he has nine that's points good. but, that could, but that then he's, get t- you he's potentially tied with it. well yeah i guess it depends if the other guys all win their other fight as well exactly it's a bit exactly. weird i don't but you know i'm not here to criticize anything i just just focusing no, on the bits that i still enjoy <laughs> yeah it's it's fair criticism teep it's the the point system sucks let's be honest it sucks because they yeah, it's it, weird it, it, it favors i, it, I don't think it, it sucks it's weird <laughs> yeah well they're, they're what they're doing is they're manipulating it to get their favorites through to the playoffs I mean that, that, and the next round matchups are going to make that real evident and real clear, because I mean, I, Santiago does. I, I, you said it was Big Marcel that said that the the matchups were not random, right? And right, I, yeah, that's the 100%. big conspiracy. That's the big no, it, conspiracy. Well, it's you'll not know conspiracy. by who they did. If it's, someone did it's a, really well, it's a fact, but they, bro. It, it, it's, it's not. It's not a conspiracy. It's a, it's a fact because they're. Well, we don't know. They they do it behind the curtain. But they say it's a draw, but like, yeah, how do we yeah, know? Right. You know exactly. Yeah. Think they should be using the the Powerball machine, and whatnot. <laughs> if it's if it's really a draw, you make a spec. You show. You prove it. You don't just be like trust us. Like, yeah, no, exactly. I don't. No one should. Yeah, you know, yeah. like make it open or don't pretend. Don't insult people. Yeah, and, but and, and this and, and then know. look at G- Dakota Dechefa. She she fought a girl. It was not on a level at all, you know. So exactly. Yeah, there, there, I could clearly see what they were doing. I so, think. They, okay, so if there's any, if there's anyone they don't want to make it through at lightweight or have a worse chance, they're going to pair him with Rabadinov. Right. Cause exactly. Because right. he's not a guy you're right. likely to just run over. You know, that one's going the distance, even if you win. Exactly. I can see them. I a tip, exactly what you're saying. I can see them doing Rabadinov versus Premis next. I was just saying that they'll get no, those no, no. I think Premis in with him. So because Premis is older, so they don't want Premis to win the. I, I don't know. I, I guess the, I would imagine they want to show somehow that PFL is better than Bellator. So like maybe Premis will be stuck in there with Rabadinov. No, I think Dufour. I, I think they're gonna do Dufour Rabadinov because. Yeah, who who is this the four guy? I don't even know. And Brent is at least a, a Bellator champion. There's a little bit of. But he's younger, right? Oh, the, they, yeah. or, or how do their contracts work? Do they sign people for multiple years, multiple seasons, or is it just for a no, season? No, 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 just a season is what I heard. Oh, I oh, see. Okay. So that changes their incentive. If that's the case, that changes their incentive to to push and, certain and, people. I may take that back. What I said. And, and Santiago, do you know if what if they don't make the playoffs? Can they go? Because we were speculating about Patricky Pitbull. If he does not make the playoffs, can he go take a fight in Ryzen later on in the year and possibly rematch Satoshi De Souza for the Ryzen title? Is do you know? I mean, do you have any kind of insight into the the PFL uh, contract structure? 
No, 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 I don't. But like, uh, I'm pretty sure Patrick, uh, is, is, if he doesn't advance, he will probably fight in the last Bellator event of the year, which is rumored to be in Japan. So, uh, but, but no, I have no idea how that works because maybe you sign a contract to be in the PFL for a season, but if your season is over, you, you, you go on the bench, you know, until 2025. Exactly. Maybe that's, yeah, maybe and, that's what's going on. And so, so they, they can force the guys to sit on the bench instead of letting them take fights in other organizations. That would suck. Hopefully that's know. not. That's the UFC does the same thing. One champion does the same thing. It's terrible. It's ter I, I yeah, hope it's not that way. My understanding is usually there's some sort of m length of time where they have to offer you a fight. Like the UFC was offering Nick Diaz stupid fights for years that he would obviously turn <laughs> down as insulting just to keep him on the bench. Yeah, but they have to do that. Or they, or they, so yeah, unless yeah. if their contracts didn't have that, that would seem like even more. I don't know if they would get people to sign those. No, for sure. Like now you're out for eight, eight months or nine months or ten months, you yeah. know. Yeah, but, but you know, but the it difference might be they is, still owe fights. Yeah, yeah, but the difference here with the PFL thing, they get two fights a year, so it's not like oh, now you're being benched. You're absolutely one hundred percent. Everybody in the tournament, in the PFL tournament, gets two fights guaranteed. So it's not like they're really screwing you. Fighting twice a year, it's it's almost perfect. You know, fighting three times a year, that's almost don't the max, they do, So aren't the playoffs the same year or no? Yes. Yeah, no, yeah, it, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, everything so everything is contested those, in eight months. I see what yeah, you mean because of the shorter turnaround, whatever. Exactly. Yeah. But if they don't, if they don't make the playoffs, then they're they're stuck on the bench till the end of the year, basically. Or, yeah. Or maybe they will have the freedom to go to Bellator MMA because that's under one um, umbrella right now. But the yes. whole thing is messed up. I didn't speak to Denise Kilots yet. I'm very uh, curious to know what's going to happen with her. Are they going to give her one fight? Is she going back to Bellator MMA? The problem with that is there is no f female flyweight division in Bellator MMA anymore. Yes, so exactly. What, what's going on there, you know? Yeah, it, it's, it's, we were speculating last week. You know, is she going to be part? Of, is she going to be part of the 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 alternate? Right? They haven't done the alternates yet, because you know they they they've done all of the the season for. I'm not going to call it a tournament. It's not a tournament. It's a season. They did all the season fights for all ten of the fighters in the season. But since the Nice Keyholes uh, got injured, and same with Phil Davis on the PFL two card. They were not on the season graphics as part of the ten fighters. So, are they going to be part of the the alternate fights? I can oh, see that for, the, for for Denise Keyholtz because, like you said, Belter does not have a two hundred uh, one hundred twenty five pound division anymore. But for Phil Davis, I think you're exactly right, Santiago. He's probably going to face face uh, 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 Corey Anderson again because it was a split decision for the Bellator title. Exactly. So, uh, that's the story behind that and then also I just wanted to say for Denise Kilos, it's also very difficult for her to even advance in this season because Jenna Bishop Tyler Santos and Dakota Dicheva all have first round finishes and then you have uh, Liz Carmouche who has a uh, decision win so yeah if you only have one fight which Denise has it's so difficult to get into the uh, tournament guys I, I don't have too long to go just wanted to say oh, Lucas okay. Brennan Lucas Brennan lost his first fight ever. Man, that was horrible to watch. But before that, Bryce Meredith scored a pretty fun uh, win against Ty Johnson. God, I love myself some Bryce Misfit Meredith, man. That guy is so exciting to watch. Yeah, and we, we were speculating that uh, Lucas Brennan lost because he couldn't use elbows. Because he had several positions oh, where, where, yeah, where, where he could have used one. elbows. And, and it, it seemed to really affect his game. Like, yeah. like, he, like something seemed off with him, right? So yeah, we yeah, that's a good angle, man. Been, I didn't even yeah. think about that. That's a really good yeah, angle. Yeah, some of these athletes, like the change in rules affects some guys yeah, more and than he looked others. Nervous, better, man. He, he, he lost against a guy he should have never lost to. The guy was not on his level at all, but uh, Lucas looked very nervous, man. Yeah, yeah, it, it was really weird. It was like, it was, we were like, what is wrong with them? And all we could think of was like, well, maybe he's like worried because he can't use elbows. And there were several spots where he, he was, normally he probably would have used elbows to, to rain down some punishment and score some points. But yeah, dude, maybe his whole he, career he's trained for the, to use those elbows. So he's like, maybe he true. was. But or he's just he's thrown off, or had an off night, or something. Or the guy just was better than thought in that matchup. Yeah, it, it, it was twenty nine, twenty eight, all scorecard. So it's not like a vicious loss. But 
he right. did was he was a minus one thousand favorite. You know, <laughs> how sick is that, right? <laughs> yes, for for the other guy, <laughs> what what incredible yeah, exactly. underdog win, right? So right. yeah, and, right. and 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 on the PFL three card, there's not that many like gross mismatches like that, right? I think there's like one or two at the most, but everything else is. I mean, I, I honestly I can't even see that. I mean. There's, uh, really, there's only like I think like the Bubba Jenkins Kai Kamaka could be considered one, but everything else uh, maybe the the lock who do you name pick? Carmelo. Who do you pick Jenkins Kamaka? Who do you think is gonna win? Bubba Bubba Jenkins because he's okay, shit. yeah he, he, he's just too good of a wrestler. He's just I, I don't think Kai Kamaka's got the wrestling to hang up hang out hang with Bubba Jenkins to I mean that's, but that's that could BFL. be a that's PFL versus Bellator. I'm definitely picking Kai Kamaka in that one. You know, Kai is difficult to take down, but uh, let's see how it's going to play out. I think the only mismatch is Boric yeah. against Barzola. I think Boric's going to really? win that. Yeah, really? yeah, I think Boric's going to win that. Barzola's up with Feather now. Oh, okay. So so you're, you're saying because Barzola's moving up in weight, exactly. he's going to be okay. a little bit smaller. Yeah, Boric's is even, really good. Really. Yeah, Boric's like uh, the number one contender un until he went into PFL. He was still the number one contender, you know. So, yeah. uh, yeah, you, you know what I'm really looking forward to, Santiago? Your boy Tamir Kizriev oh, versus, shit. versus Brett Johns. That to me, yeah. Yeah. That yeah. Timur, yeah. Timur trains yeah. with uh, yeah. Sabit Magomed Sheripov and, man. and he, with uh, he throws so much. Cheap, cheap. You got, you got to get to a better reception, brother. You got to get to better reception. But go, go ahead, Santiago. No, I, I was just saying Timur Kisriev trains with Sabit Magomed Sheripov and also with Kazan and also with uh, Tiger Magomedov, who is about to fight against Petschi Mix for the title. He comes from a very excellent camp, undefeated Timur Kisriev. Massive, massive prospect at featherweight. And uh, man, he's my dark horse to win the whole tournament. Difficult to say because you have Adam Borix in this tournament. You have Brandon Lovnani. Uh... You, you know, is these are some uh, some big names. So, so difficult to say that he's gonna win it all, but don't count him out, man. That's uh, a, a big dark horse for me, guys. Absolutely. I have to get out. Yeah, guys, I have to get out of here, man. This was a lot of fun. Are you guys gonna recap PFL today? Yes, yes. Yeah, we're so gonna recap. do it a week PFL a week three? from today. I actually have to go as well. Why don't Santiago just this one time? Why don't you just stay while J Wolf signs us out? All right, we let's do it. Okay, hey, man, right, yeah, this yeah. has been real. This has been so much fun. I can't wait to talk to you guys again in a week. Rock and roll. Absolutely. Yeah, in a week, week, I can stay a little bit longer. So I'm sorry that I have to cut off again, guys. But next week, it's only 20 seconds. Longer. Go ahead, Jay Wolf. Give us the oh, thing, brother. Don't even trip. Yeah, this Friday, PFL 3. Make sure you tune in. Uh, 6 30 p.m. Eastern on ESPN Plus in America. And then it's going to be a lot of fun. Tune in and tune in next Sunday for the ridiculously long recap with. Teep, Jay Wolf, and Santiago, main man from Amsterdam for the Bellator Zone. Later, everybody. Thanks for listening. And you know, we're talking about Pride Never, of Almighty Pride FC when we say Pride Never Die. Pride is rising. Take Peace. it easy. Stay hydrated. Peace.